Hello guys, my name is Adam Shadow, and my friend and fellow prototype member Activation inspired me to do something I would like to, like his videos about the basics of lag and no using not no redstone. I decided to do something about the basics of storage tech. What what is the general idea? What are the basic principles? This will be mostly theoretical, because the practical thing is so complicated, I could not even fit it in probably a 10 hour video. So what is, you need to first of all define your goal, if you are making any storage system, or however you want to call it. I will try to avoid as many special terms as possible, or at least explain them. Let's say you want to have the most basic thing imaginable, which is a so-called slot reservation storage. This means you have, let's say, you have all of these slots filled with uh, different items. For example, this one will be for chests, this one will be for uh, hoppers. Now if I put in let's say stack of hoppers and a stack of chests what will happen? The hoppers will be put into the places reserved for hoppers however if I now want to take them out I actually have to left click and immediately right click just to preserve it if, uh, in case there would be other items coming. As you can see now it fills chest. This is the absolute most primitive imaginable storage is this. A container, also a block with an inventory and a hopper. Of course, you can make it more complicated. You can add another container here, as so you can put a lot, lot more items. You could even make it somehow continue from this, but that gets a lot more complicated because you have to actually lock the hoppers. So, if your goal is to simply store a small amount of items in a small space, but a lot of different items, but I, I will call them for the sake of simplification, item types. Because if we, I say item, it's not clear if I mean uh, one of these redstone dusts or I mean one of these things here, right? The more complicated version of this are filters that uh, make sure that in every chest, for example, let's say in ch we use just chests in this case, we have only one type of item. So let's say th this would be filled with only chests, and then I would have another one that will be filled with only hoppers. This can be already simplified because this, is also, this can be made to not require the slot reservation very easily. There are also ones that keep like set amount of things without slot reservation, but it kind of works. I'm not going to dive too much into that. Because usually the mo most common requirements for storage at least from my experience on playing on public servers like factions, survivals, skyblocks and any of these things, even just like some sort of survival worlds, is to have just a set of items, let's say 20 different items or 100 different items that you most commonly use, reasonably accessibly stored. For most people, just a simple array of item filters is more than enough in this case. However, 
This can be obviously made more complicated and therefore better in certain aspects. For example, we can, if we have, for example, an array of these chests, we can have them on one side and on the other side. This already may, means we don't need to walk eight blocks in this case, but only four blocks at most, which is already a huge advantage. This is called density of the storage. Basically, the more item times per block in a hallway that you have to walk, the better. If you remember my ultimate storage system, it had like 10 different or 80 different item types per slice, or even more in the older versions. That's already a thing you want to optimize on your storage, but that's not everything. Usually with modern storages, even on these public servers, you usually have access to at least uh, some amount of shulker boxes. The simplest way to deal with it is to just do it the way I did it in my faction uh, base, where I literally just ran the item straight into shulker boxes and let the player manually break it and pick it up. However, many technical servers have basically unlimited amounts of shulker boxes, usually simply by duplicating them. Or if you are playing on a public server, you usually can buy them in a shop, like this, say you sell a stack of sugarcane and you can buy one shulker box or something like that. Therefore, you usually want to have a lot of full boxes of one item, because it immensely improves the amount of items you can store. Simply, one box is 1728 items. That means you can, instead of putting stacks of 64 items, you can put stacks of 1728 items into a chest, which you can realize is quite an immense improvement. However, let's not dive too deep into this. So this is just the basics. The other thing is, we are we're just using right now hoppers and chests. We can use droppers, observers. Observers are mostly, as activation explained already, for using in combination with rails or node blocks to improve lag efficiency. The way you Stack, uh, the hoppers and uh, droppers stack up. Hoppers are usually the easier ones to use, but they lag and you need to cover them at the top because that significantly reduces how much they lag. For In the newer versions the best way to do this is use composters because then the hoppers will not try to pick up items. But they will still transport them, as you can see. This redu significantly reduces lag. Droppers are way better in this case, uh, in terms of even when you lock hoppers, which is done by simply powering them. You can't quasi connectivity power hoppers, by the way, if you are interested. For example, this still powers the dropper. So you can see, it's not clicking. But if you, I would do it here, it would not lock the hopper. Even these locked hoppers actually cause more lag than these droppers. All of these things are tile entities, which is really complicated. The main thing is you want to just reduce the amount of things with inventory inside your storage. Just the less of them, the better in general. For example, if you are concerned about rails, it doesn't matter. If you have twice as many rails, if they are not powered, it doesn't matter. Even if they are powered too rarely. But if you have twice as many hoppers, even if they are locked, it's still a big issue in terms of lag. 
lag in this case is how long it takes for the server to process, especially on public services you have a lot of people building a lot of things with a lot of hoppers, it can really quickly destroy the server. Hoppers also push items every 8 game takes. They grab them way faster than that, however. I don't remember the exact rate of this. Oh yeah, it's actually probably something in, like instant. Yeah, I think my Hopper Minecraft had like one game thing or something like that for it. These things are instant. However, for well, droppers can't do this, obviously. They can only transport items. However, they can, unlike Hoppers, who wait 8 game takes, so this would actually take, see, 8 times 4, which is 32 game takes. Game takes are basically 1 20th of a second. We are not talking about what some people mistakenly call things like redstone takes. Or this is 2 game takes. This is 4, 6, and 8. If you don't know already about this. These things always take 8 game takes, which is the same as this, basically. However, droppers can be way faster. For example, this already works. This is 2 game takes for each. You can also power them instantly, like in my instant line video, where I, you, you can simply even do it with redstone, I think where you can just put dust on it and if you power it from the right side it actually immediately fires the item from one end and the other which is kind of insane to think about things that happen in basically zero time so that's the way they stack up droppers when they are powered like even if you power them every 8 game takes they cause more lag than covered hoppers, especially when transporting items, which is very important to remember. So you only want to use droppers where you very rarely move items or when you need to move them up, for example, or in some sort of weird case where the hoppers don't fit inside. The last, probably Im immensely important block is the comparator. The comparator simply tells you how, to what a level the thing is filled up. I, there are formulas to compute how much exactly power it will emit if I, for example, put a stack of items into this. Or you just go to the Minecraft wiki where it's all listed. Usually, most of the time, what you want to know is is it full or is it empty or is it more full than it previously was? Let's say it, as default, it's there's one stack, and I, I really want to know, for example, I want to do something when this increases. So this is usually what you most of the time use comparators for. You can also detect this change using observers. Okay, we probably need the piston there. So yeah, those are all of the important blocks and the basics of this. The rest is basically just knowing how to use them. Of course, including pistons and the other things you need for wiring without using redstone, just as activation explained it. And just learning all of the various structures people came up with, like item filters, and box loaders and similar machines. 
So yeah, that's probably all I have for you today. I just wanted to explain you the very basics of this, so you at least understand what my machines are kind of doing and how they kind of work and appreciate maybe more the all the hard work people put into designing storage contraptions. I hope you learned something new and have a great day.